Okay. Yes, Brother Chuck? I wanted to mention to you again about Nancy Taylor. Okay. Mention that. Uh, got a call from Ed Taylor yesterday. His wife's in the hospital. He was kind of upset, so I never really found out what she's in there for. My wife and I think it might be for depression. We're not sure. But okay. She's in the hospital. has been there for a couple of days. And from the way it sounds like she's going to be there for a little while longer. But I can't give you any more information than what I know right now, but she's in the hospital, so he'd like for the church to remember her and pray for her. Okay, and uh, we appreciate that. She's a very, very sweet lady, and uh, she's married to kind of honor man, but she's real sweet. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, Nancy, you can't help but love her, can you? She's just a wonderful person. And so pray for her. Like I said, uh, was, we're just not sure exactly what's going on in her life, uh, but if you notice the the request we've had has been for a number of pastors and uh, things have been going on. So I feel like Satan's doing everything he can to discourage pastors and, uh, uh, of course, other people too. But, so really keep Nancy in your prayers. We assure Brother Chuck that we'll be praying for Nancy. And she's in the hospital there. I guess it's in Tennessee now. And so she'll appreciate that and her husband will too. All right. If you have your Bibles, turn to Daniel chapter 6. And uh, I'll confess to you, Daniel's one of my favorite characters in the Bible. But as I was looking at Daniel, I was uh, actually with uh, Richard at the hospital there in Fort Wayne uh, Friday. And so I was studying on Daniel and it just I thought, well, we'll go ahead and see what the Lord does. And so we prepared a message accordingly. But as I think of Daniel, he lived in a time of great trouble. Uh, there was a lot of division in the country that he lived in. Did that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. A lot of division in the country. Uh, and he was living during some times that uh, literally the, some of the, the leadership was just literally crazy. And uh, some of them were very uh, ungodly, very much against God and what uh, God stood for, if you please. Many were actually involved in devil worship and other things along those lines. But they were also jealous of anybody that did right, <coughs> that was doing good. And so they would try to stop those that were really... Uh, for the people, and Daniel was for the people. He was uh, for helping them and uh, doing the right things. Kind of sounds almost similar to situations that we had uh, with our President Trump and uh, those that had been out to get him. Uh, Daniel, uh, definitely you can identify with Trump and some of the things that have happened, the things that they fabricated to uh, get rid of him. And so as we look at Daniel again, he lived in times that were just so much like what we're living in today very much like the last days. And so as we begin reading, I'm going to read a, a little bit more uh, verses than I normally do. And so in Daniel chapter 6, verses 1 through 23 is where we want to read at this time. And so as we begin reading, it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should rule over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was the first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. And so you can see that the problems, he's been promoted. He's already got a very high position and already said he was the number one president. And uh, it's kind of interesting, when we were in Benoit II, uh, the prime minister barred the president, the vice president, and all the legislators in their country while we were there. So the whole government was fired, uh, with the exception of the prime minister. And it seems strange if there'd be a prime minister, then there'd be a president and a vice president. But anyhow, that's a similar situation that we have right here. So then, notice what it says. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, Neither was there any error or fault found in him. And so, folks, as they looked at Daniel, he had an excellent spirit to him. He had a, a godly spirit to him, folks. Uh, he leaned upon God heavily. He trusted in God. He was a humble man, and we could just go on and on, all the things about him. And uh, as we look at him, it says that there was no error, there was no fault in him. Everything he did was above board. So how do you stop somebody like that? How, how do you get rid of them? And how do you cause the king to, to find him in disfavor? Well, here's what they did, verse 5. 
Then said these men, remember these are the rulers. And again, that reminds me of our situation that we had today. Uh, how many of our rulers are in favor of us? How many really seem to be concerned about us little guys, if you please? Uh, and, and as you look at it, it seems like they're out to get us, they're out to tax us to death, they're out to uh, increase all the prices and everything. I mean, we just go on and on, the inflation and stuff that we're going through. But notice Daniel was for the little guy. But as we look at him, notice what I said, they couldn't find anything wrong concerning him. And then finally, then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel. In other words, there was no scandals whatsoever on him except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. In other words, he loves his God so much that he puts his God above everything else. And so they thought that's the only way that we can get him is by saying he's a Christian, that he's a believer, and that's where we have to stop him. So what do you do next? Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king, and they said unto him, King Darius, live forever, okay? All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains have been sold together to establish a royal statue and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, folks, this is the largest kingdom that had ever existed at, at that time and had, had ever existed up to that point. And can you imagine a person having a situation, something he's wanting to take care of, and have to go to the king to ask if, uh, can I add a room onto my house? <laughs> you know, uh, is it okay for me to marry this woman? I, I, I mean, for uh, folks, you see how ridiculous this is? So they get us to build up the king and say, King, we just think you're so wonderful that how dare somebody talk to God or a God or gods or, or talk to some counselor or whatever, they all need to come to you first <laughs> before they do that for 30 days. And again, just totally ridiculous. But again, they were saying, King, you are so great. You are so powerful. You're so smart. And we just want to make sure that everybody can just see just really how great you are. So they're building them up. And so without thinking, because of all the praise that he's received, he went ahead and, and uh, here's what it says, verse 8. Now, o king, establish this decree, sign the writing, that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which offereth not. And I don't know, maybe you could put it, because of the law of the Democrats and the Republicans, it cannot be changed. But anyhow, <laughs> move it along. But here's what it says as we read on. Wherefore, King Darius signed, uh, or signed the writ writing and decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Folks, there's so many things about Daniel, but don't you see that even when he went to prayer, everybody took knowledge that when he went to prayer, it was constantly just, thank you, God, for being God. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for helping me in every situation. Thank you, God, that you hear what I'm saying. I, I mean, everything revolved around, thank you, God. Folks, he was in captivity. Folks, he had been child abused. <laughs> he had been made a eunuch. And folks, for a Jewish man, I mean, for any person, that's a terrible thing. But the Jewish people were always hoping that they would have the Messiah, that he would come through their lines. And so for him to be taken, if you please, to, to be made a unit was, wow, that is child abuse in the worst form. And what I'm saying is, he's in a strange land, he's had to learn a new language, and his parents very likely were killed right in front of him as the Babylonians came into their uh, the city of Jerusalem. He witnessed horrible, horrible things. What I'm saying, if, if anybody, humanly speaking, had a right to be bitter with the government, to be bitter with the world, to be bitter with God, Daniel, he did. And, and folks, again, I want to emphasize the fact that he did what was right because it's not right for any of us to become bitter with God or bitter over things that have happened in our life. And yet it's so easy to, isn't it? 
especially when others say, well, you have a right to be angry. You have a right, but, you know. Daniel constantly thanked God. How can you thank God for being made a eunuch? How can you thank God for being in captivity? How can you thank God for your parents being slaughtered in front of you? How can, folks, he saw so much and loved God so much. And folks, he wasn't insane by any means. He was a very, very wise man. But he knew that God had a greater picture than what he could see. And folks, we need to learn to trust God no matter what's happening. Has there been a lot of crazy things happening in our country? Yeah. Uh, folks, has there been a lot of crazy things happening in the world? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we could go on and on. Maybe a lot of crazy things happening in your own home. Maybe even within your own self. Wow. We could go on and on. But simply, Daniel, folks, he had more of a right to, to gripe and complain than I think any of us could ever dream of. But he didn't do it. And so I'm talking about us following the example of this godly man. Notice as we read on then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Oh, you know what? I don't think any of these men were surprised. Uh, and, you know, if you please, uh, he was very, very, Daniel was very stubborn concerning his relationship with God. And uh, this is one place where you see stubbornness. It's definitely right. And basically, he had faith in his God and that his God would take care of him. So he went ahead and followed through with his testimony. Look. Daniel's praying. Wow. <laughs> then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within 30 days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? And the king answered and said, The thing is true according to the laws of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petitions three times a day. I mean, they're out there taking the home and said three times he's prayed today. <laughs> uh, Folks, and I believe Daniel probably prayed more than that, but that's when it was obvious that he was praying to God. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself. Folks, this king realized, these men deceived me. They tricked me into signing this decree. They tricked me into thinking that I was so wonderful and all these things, and man, I, I can't believe I was so vain as to listen to these guys and get caught up in my pride and, and sign this decree that they already had written out. I should have known that something was up. Well, he goes on. Verse 14, Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And so even though he knew it was a law according to the land, to the, the Medes and the Persians, he did everything that he possibly could. But as king, he was, had his limitations, folks. And I read that God doesn't have any limitations. But the king had limitations because of the law. And no matter, he couldn't pardon Daniel. He couldn't do anything to free Daniel from the decree that he had signed. Wow. And so as a result, it says that he tried to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. He did everything he could to keep Daniel from being cast into the lion's den. Then these men assembled unto the king, and they said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and the Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. So they reminded him, you signed it, you put it in the law, there is nothing you can do about it now, you have to follow through. <clears throat> then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. <laughs> Boy, don't you wish we had a king, oh, excuse me, a, a president like that, that could see things and, and say, Hey, I know your God can deliver you from the lines. I know that your God can take care of you. And, and maybe if you please, you can say, your God has taken care of you over and over and over again. And I, I don't see any reason why he can't take care of you again, but I'm so sorry that I have to be the one that has to have you cast into the lines then. 
Wow. And so he gave that testimony concerning Daniel's God, that Daniel's God could deliver him from those lions. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den. The king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose not be changed concerning Daniel. In other words, Daniel's doom had been sealed. He was left inside there with the lions. Then the king went to his palace and he passed the night fasting. Now, folks, a king can eat whatever he wants, whatever he wants to eat. And, and oftentimes they eat late at night and so forth. And I can go on and on and all the things. But instead, this king went home and fasted. And if you please, he was praying and asking Jehovah God to take care of this yeah. Jewish man. Wow. Uh, be nice to have a king like that. Folks, he made a mistake. He knew he made a mistake. And he, he did what he could to change it. But he was limited because of the laws of the land, so to speak. So then he goes on and notes what it says. The king went to his palace and passed it. Neither were the instruments of music brought before him and his sleep went from him. He couldn't sleep if he wanted to sleep. And folks, he didn't want to sleep because the whole time he was concerned for his friend, Daniel. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste up to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said, Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Can you picture him as he's waiting to hear from Daniel? And see for him to hear from Daniel that he knows that Daniel's God delivered him, that Daniel's God is the God of all gods, that Daniel is a man of tremendous faith, a man of tremendous courage. Then as he said this, listen to what Daniel said. Now I don't know about you if you'd spend the night with these hungry, stinking lions, and I don't know if you're uh, aware of how bad cats can stink. You ever had your car marked? And we had to mark our front porch that went home. And whenever there's a certain bit of rain, it just seems to track through the whole house. You know, ooh, we had a tomcat in our front of our house. Uh, can you imagine? <coughs> These are big tomcats, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> can you imagine the stench and everything that was going on? And they were hungry. They were upset, the lions. And so here's his answer to the king. And I think this is so amazing. This king done him dirty in a very real sense. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. <laughs> in other words, in another sense, it's almost like, God save the king. And I believe that there's, I, I don't think there's any question in my mind that there was a believer. And it was because of Daniel. That he had accepted Daniel's God as his God. That he was also looking forward to the Messiah because of things that he did. Uh, as he ruled uh, there in, in uh, uh, the former Babylon. But my God has sent his angel, this is Daniel's testimony, my God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me, for as much as before him innocence was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Folks, he was as complimentary to this king as he possibly could be. And it wasn't fictitious at all. He said, King, I, basically, I, I realized that you did this in innocent, that you were tricked. And he said, and God knows my heart, that my heart was right with God and that I've done what I can to please God. I put God first in my life in spite of everything that's happened. God is first, and I love him completely to the utmost. But I know also that this, I'm not looking at you that it was your fault that I was cast in here because you were deceived. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him. Wow. Just sent this, this man to death, finds out that he's still alive. <laughs> and he's exceedingly happy. Wow. For commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. <laughs> Folks, 
Are you ready? The God that Daniel served is the God that we serve today. Same God. And, and folks, it, it's so sad that so many times we we get caught up in things that are happening and saying, Preacher, it's really bad out there. It's really terrible. And Preacher, this is happening and that's happening. And what are we going to do? This is really bad, the situation. Have you heard of the new tax? And, and Preacher, I, I, I just... Uh, they've gone up on my rent again, and they've gone up on the utilities, and they've gone up on the gas, and they go up, and everything's just going up and up and up and up. And it's just really bad. Folks, it is bad. But our God can handle bad, okay? Our God wants to handle the situations that we find ourselves in. And sometimes God allows things to happen so we can see and be reminded of who He is. Folks, you ready for this? Would you say that God loved Daniel? Yeah. I, I don't think he would question that at all. So, yeah, God definitely loved Daniel. God definitely intervened in Daniel's behalf. Okay, let me put it this way. Do you think God loves you as much as he loved Daniel? And if you think different, you're wrong. Because God loves you as much as he loved Daniel. And just as he sent his son into this world to die for our sins, and Daniel knew that he was coming into this world to save him from his sins, that's how much God loves you. And so as I look at Daniel, what a tremendous man. And I think uh, I've used this term many times before that we need to dare to be a Daniel. We need to dare to stand up for uh, God like Daniel did. And I appreciate this man that was so faithful. But everything you look at him, no matter what decisions he was facing, he always put God first. He always asked God, well, what should I do in this situation? How do you want me to handle this? And then he would wait upon God to answer his prayers and to take care of whatever he was facing. So when I look at Daniel, the, the first thing that hits me about him, of course, is his faith. But then the next thing I look at his wisdom. Folks, he had a tremendous wisdom. And, and, and you ready for this? It was because his wisdom, it wasn't from pushing a button or saying, hey, Google. <laughs> it, it wasn't from, oh, okay, Alexis. Uh, you know, it, it wasn't that type of, it was simply God. And God gave him the wisdom of the universe. And God helped him with every decision that he needed to make. And maybe there was even times that Daniel made decisions that, humanly speaking, it's, you know, okay, God, you're God. You know better than I do, but, uh, well, okay, I'll just do what you say, God. And he would do it without hesitation. So when Daniel knew that the writing or the decree was signed, he went into his house and he prayed. Even though it had become illegal for him to do that, he continued to pray to honor his God above, if you please, the laws of this land. So when problems harassed his soul, when danger threatened Daniel, he invariably went in to his heavenly father on his knees. He humbled himself and asked God for help. He went to his house and prayed. And folks, what a blessing when you find men like this. Daniel 2.17, we find that no doubt he met with Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. These were the three men that were cast into the fiery furnace over another king in another situation. And uh, God delivered them from that fiery furnace. And even in that fiery furnace, they were able to see Jesus in there. And how exciting it is that because of our life and because of our testimony, that people can see Jesus in us, that they can see Jesus around us and Jesus working for us. Wow. And uh, again, he does so much for us. But we find that, that this Hebrew man, that whatever he did, he always, always took it to God. He always drew close to God when he had problems. I wish I could tell you that every time I hear something on the news and it doesn't sound good, and, every, and that's been so much here lately, we don't get a lot of good news. When you hear What's our first tendency? I, I think our first tendency we just kind of get upset and go, how in the world can they do that? It's completely against the Constitution of the United States of America. It's against all the laws that we have. How can they do that? What are they doing? Why? And you look at all these things. And what I'm saying is we get angry and get frustrated. What did Daniel do? Uh, I don't see he got angry at all, do y'all? He just went to God and said, God, you know about this new law that they've made, and I know why this law has been made. It's to get me. And folks, 
You ready? There's a lot of people that are in leadership in this government and they hate Christians. And you know what they really, really hate? Fundamentalists. And that's what we're considered. We're considered fundamental Christians. In other words, we believe that the Bible is the word of God and we try to follow the word of God as close as we can. They hate that. Wow. Yep, the devil hates you. This world hates you. But God loves you. And God wants to help us. So here's what I, I say too. When we live in a time like this, look at Daniel, how great his courage was in the face of death. And, and, and folks, when you think of ways to die, well, I think of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego as they were thrown into the fiery furnace. And I think that'd be one of the most frightening ways. And I think if we were to talk to uh, everybody today and, and, and give you some sort of poem, how would you like to die? And how many would say, I'd love to just burn to death, you know, slow burning, you know, that, that'd be great. <laughs> we go, okay. Uh, I, I don't know about y'all, I don't like I choose that. And, and then some of you might say, well, uh, maybe just choke to death, you know, or, or maybe drown, you know. And, and some said, yeah, I guess drowning might be the best way to go. Or, and, and then someone might put down something just real spiritual like and say, I'd like to go to sleep and wake up in heaven. Wow, that sounds good. I'm sorry. But, but, but anyhow, what I'm trying to say, how many should say, I would love to be mauled by a bunch of lions and then chewed up by those lions and then, you know, fighting for my life in a helpless way like a mouse, you know, with all these big cats just eating on me and just having all this fun with me as they're knocking me around and just tearing me apart and eating my guts out and everything. Oh, that'd be a wonderful way to go. <laughs> okay, folks, I wouldn't choose that way. Would you? <laughs> What am I saying? Daniel was a man of courage because he knew who his God was. And he knew that his God would take care of him and see him through whatever was happening. So he continued to do God's law, if you please, over the law of man. And we need to do likewise. And he was willing to open his windows. In other words, he, he wanted to be a testimony for the cause of Christ. And he was just that. He did just exactly what they thought he would. He's so strong in his faith. He's going to have to go talk to his God again. Uh, we've got him. And sure enough, he did. So again, how great was his faith? When I look at his faith, it was just amazing that he trusted God so much that he openly, and think how easy it would have been, well, today I'll just keep the windows closed when I pray. And, after all, I'm to be praying, and praying is the important thing that I pray, you know. But instead, he did just like he always did. Because, folks, that was a testimony. That was a testimony, everyone. Uh, thank the Lord, I, I was at the hospital Friday and uh, went down to the restaurant there, and uh, I noticed a little couple uh, in front of me, and uh, I noticed that she was waiting for me to get there. Finally, he got there, and then they just went ahead and both bowed their heads, and they were clearly praying. I thought, man, that's great, you know, because you don't see that every day. And uh, but what I'm saying is, so many people are pray, afraid to pray out loud, or or they'll just maybe say within themselves, "Dear God, bless my food. Thank you for it." Okay, <laughs> yeah, if <laughs> whatever. Instead of showing reverence to God by bowing our head and closing our eyes and talking to Him in a public place, I'm so glad that God talks to me publicly all the time. And I'm sure many of you can give the same testimony how many times we feel God's impression upon us. But he opened his window toward Jerusalem so that he had faith that one day God will restore the Jewish people back to the city of Jerusalem, which God has done. And so if we look home again, uh, he loved God. But he also made it clear when he prayed facing toward Jerusalem that he believed in the promises of God. And folks, I'm excited that we can pray and face in heaven, if you please, and have faith that one day it will be there with the Lord. So the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was his God, but he's also our God. I'm so glad that we can trust him and know that he will take care of us just as he did his servant Daniel. I know something else about Daniel here that made him great. He had a great humility. It says he went into his house and he kneeled upon his knees. And folks, I, I don't know about y'all, but as I've gotten older, it's harder for me to get down on my knees and it's really hard to get back up. <laughs> and, and so there's things that he did here, but he showed that 
he honored God above everyone else. You know, he would not bow to the king. Even though the king was king, everybody else had to bow, and the king made an exception for him. But we see that his greatness was, if you please, born upon his knees because he was willing to bow himself before God Almighty and let God Almighty work in his life in a fantastic way. On his knees, he stood higher than any man uh, on that earth, if you please, at that time because of his relationship with God. Again, I appreciate Daniel. The strength that he had was in his faith in God. We see that he had great persistence. He kneeled upon his knee three times a day. And how many of us, I mean, if we pray just once a day, we're like, wow, God, you're real lucky. I, I talked to you once a day already. <laughs> and yet it says he prayed three times a day openly so that the whole nation could see that he was praying for their country. He was praying for the land. He was praying for the people. So he prayed, but also something else that he did. Now, could you imagine? sitting uh, in a restaurant here in town and hearing somebody pray and, and they said, Lord, thank you for this food and thanks for this time with my family and my loved ones. Thank you for what you're doing in our country today and thank you for, uh, I mean, there's certain things that we go, wow, okay, how can he do that? And, uh, and what they caught was his gratitude to God for all the things that were happening. Folks, here's the thing, the more evil our world becomes, the sooner Jesus is going to be here. Okay. So thanks. how can we expect things to get better if Jesus is coming? Folks, this world is going to get so bad before Jesus comes, as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, as it was in the days before the flood. The Bible says it's going to get that way again, and it definitely, definitely is there. So close. So we see his gratitude as he always thanked God. It had a Thanksgiving message, if you please, every time he went to that window and he prayed. So again, we need to learn from him. Can you thank God for something? Well, he gave you another day why? Maybe he gave you opportunity to witness somebody. Maybe he let, let you lead somebody to Christ. But what I'm saying, there's so many things that we can thank God for that God, <clears throat> he is in control. And folks, even though we look at things and it looks like the total chaos, God knows what he's doing. And God allows so many things to happen. Again, our God is not the author of sin. But he allows things to happen. So we can see again just how strong God is. And I'm so thankful for our great God that we can trust him, that we can believe in him. As you continue in Daniel chapter 6, there's so much that's said about this king here and how this king <coughs> magnifies who God is. So Daniel... Uh, as we look at his God again, same God you have, same God I have. It folks, the faith that he had that the Messiah was coming into the world is the same faith that we had that Jesus was the Messiah, that Jesus came into this world to die for sinners. Because, folks, you ready? Everybody in there is a sinner. We're all sinners. And thank the Lord if you're a sinner saved by God's grace. I and mean, that's what we want. And that's the only way we can ever go to heaven is by trusting Jesus. We sure can't trust ourselves. You can't trust the church. You can't trust the preacher. And I go not lying. Uh, but what I'm saying is we can always trust Jesus. Keep Jesus in the proper place in our life. And that's what Daniel did. And some of his prophecies were so, wow, it, it was unbelievable. In fact, his prophecies were so accurate that later on when they saw these prophecies and these things had come to pass, they said, well, actually, these prophecies were written later when they happened. And then they just shoved it in here saying that Daniel had wrote these things out. <laughs> and, uh, folks, no. It was clearly God gave him such wisdom that he could see what was happening in the future, just like he did for John, the beloved. Uh, on, on the island of Patmos, so he was able to open his eyes and see the Revelations, Revelations chapter uh, the book of Revelations. And so again, how exciting. God loves you. God does. And folks, if we want to be great like Daniel, we need to be praying for this nation. And we need to be praying for people to get saved. And we need to pray for people in positions of authority that they would get saved. And just as God saved Darius, just as they saved Nebuchadnezzar, these wicked kings, uh, 
President Biden can get saved. Nancy Pelosi can get saved. We go on down the list, all of them can get saved. Uh, pray for their salvation. Boy, wouldn't that be amazing? Uh, wouldn't it be nice to uh, upset the devil? <laughs> so let's pray, because God can save anyone. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's a fantastic promise. Would you stand to your feet as we begin our invitation? Lord, thank you for this time we can come together and study your word. Thank you for the example of this godly man, Daniel. Wow, how he stands out in the scriptures as a spiritual giant. Uh, and yet when we look at his life and all the things that we can say, wow, this happened to him and this happened to him and this happened to him. Wow, that was awful. That was terrible. That was bad. That was even worse. And yet all through it, he shined like a bright light. He was like a lighthouse on a stormy sea, lighting the, the way for the, the seamen to see the way that they should go. Lord, help us to be a light in this troubled world. Help us to realize that the, the more problems that this world has, the, the more division and uh, trials that we see, that the more we can shine in this dark world. Help us to, to be a, a light, a beacon of hope. Lord, I pray if there's someone here under the sound of my voice that's never asked you to forgive them of their sins, that they would pray this simple sinner's prayer and say, Dear God, please forgive me of all my sins and come into my heart and become my Lord and my Savior. Lord, may they pray that in faith. Thank you again for the wonderful promises that we have from your word. Thank you for the wonderful illustrations of people like Daniel. Help us to dare to be like him in this, this troublesome times. We ask this in your son's precious name. Amen. Dare to be a Daniel. Daniel saw his people butchered, persecuted, saw many terrible things happen as they were sold into slavery. He saw problem after problem after problem. Then he could always see God had a better plan. That God was working through all these things to bring his people to a special place, a special relationship. If you would, Brother Lex, would you pray for us, brother? Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for gathering us in the house of the Lord. And this is the preacher, the preacher, Brother Sean, Lord, your own dad. And be with us and guide us. We carry on through this week and right now. And bring on back to church tonight, Lord. And just be with us. And just keep the sick, Lord. And be, be with all, Lord. Be with your special. We ask the same, your precious name. Amen. Amen. Amen.